Mr. Speaker, I rise today in strong support of H.R. 4692, the National Manufacturing Strategy Act. Over the past decade, almost one-third of American manufacturing jobs have disappeared. After 110 years as the world's top manufacturing country, the United States is about to lose that perch to China. And we all know how hard it is when we go anywhere to, to buy toys, tools, whatever it is, we know how hard it is to find made in the USA on the label. But American manufacturing job loss is not inevitable. And I do not accept the notion that there is nothing that we can do. Clearly, another decade like the last one would dramatically undermine the American middle class and our national security. That's why I introduced the National Manufacturing Strategy Act. I work with business, labor, and trade organizations to make this a bipartisan bill with broad support. At this time, I want to ask unanimous consent record letters of support from some of these organizations. Without objection, so ordered. The Strategy Act requires the president to appoint a board composed of government and private sector personnel to conduct an in-depth analysis of American manufacturing. Then they must produce a strategy that includes short-term and long-term goals for creating jobs, improving domestic production investment in international competitiveness, and assuring an adequate defense industrial base. Finally, the president and the board must deliver specific recommendations for accomplishing these goals. Like America's quadrennial defense review, the manufacturing strategy will be updated every four years, enabling us to build upon successful initiatives while correcting course as necessary. The Government Accountability Office will have to produce an analysis of progress on implementation of the strategy. All of this designed to make sure that the board is producing something and we are following through on that. Mr. Speaker, passage of the National Manufacturing Strategy Act will ensure that American manufacturing remains on the national agenda. Numerous other countries already have manufacturing strategies, including not only China and India, but the United Kingdom, Canada, Brazil, Japan, Germany. It's about time that America does the same before it is too late for middle class Americans and for our national security. Some may say that the time for American manufacturing has passed. I don't believe this. I know that American manufacturers can't compete with anyone in the world if we have a level playing field and if we are planning ahead. I know in my district, from Atlas Tool and Die to Corey Steele to Archer Wire to West Bend to ODM, just a few of the manufacturers who are making it, having a difficult time, but they can do it, and all American manufacturers can do it because America has the greatest manufacturers in the world. I'd like to thank Majority Leader Hoyer and Caucus Chairman Larson for bringing this bill to the floor. I'd like to thank uh, Congressman Braley for his work on this, along with Chairman Bobby Rush, Ranking Member Whitfield for uh, the work that, uh, that we did in improving this bill. Uh, thank you for, for your comments. And I want to make sure that we made this a strong bipartisan bill that we could agree upon. There are a lot of issues that are out there, and I believe we must continue to promote policies that help create jobs immediately. We're not going to agree on all those, but I think this is something that we can agree upon. The National Manufacturing Strategy Act establishes a process for strengthening American manufacturing over the long term, and it's something that we must do, and I ask my colleagues today to support this important legislation pass this bill, 
And I yield back the balance of my time. Gentleman yields back.